Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Don't you wish you had a helper at work, a trusted companion? Thank you for joining us today. My name is Adam Jaffe, and I'm the marketing manager at ASCOM, and I'll be your moderator today. Our presenters today is product marketer for mobility at ASCOM, Marilla Katima, along with global product manager from software, Daniel Rodin. Before I hand it over to Daniel to start the presentation, I wanted to quickly review the functionality of the GoToWebinar platform for those who haven't used it before. Um, right now, I have everyone on mute to avoid the background noises. Throughout the presentation, you can enter your questions and comments in the question box. Or if you'd rather ask in person, you can use the icon on the control panel to raise your hand to indicate that you have a question. Once your hand is raised, I'll unmute the line so you can ask the question live. Okay, without further ado, I'll hand over the microphone to Daniel Rodin to begin. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, Adam, and welcome. Um, today, I would like to talk about the, uh, yeah, let's say the number one issue for healthcare. And uh, we, we get to hear this a lot when we're out meeting other customers. And um, our experience is at least that the, the number one issue for them is a feeling of basically too few hands on the deck, a shortage of staff. And of course, we understand that the obvious solution is to add more staff or more, more personnel. Uh, but that's, uh, it's not always possible. We know that the budgets on, in hospitals, they are tight. And it's not easy to find and retain the right people with the right skill set. But of course, there are alternatives involving having tools, such as the ASCO Maiko that help them achieve more with the resources that they already have. And that will basically be the topic for today. How to achieve more with the resources that you already have using more tool, better tools adapted to, to your environment. And uh, the focus, at least for ASCOM, is to assist caregivers with better use of information technology to create efficiency, to help them avoid adverse events, and to give them good tools for decision support. And even though most healthcare systems have already invested quite heavily into IT, our experience is that there's currently too much focus on storing information versus communicating and sharing this information. We know that staff put a lot of time into gather data, but this data is not always available when needed. And in this study, researchers found that nurses spend almost two times, uh, two times the time, 35% on documenta documentation compared to patient care, which is 19%. And the root cause might, of course, vary. Uh, but one is that hospital staff, they cannot perform their work in front of stationary computer screens. They perform it in interaction with their patient and interaction with colleagues. Basically, staff is mobile. And what we at ASCOM want to help you with uh, is to make information as mobile as your staff. And we at ASCOM, we are roughly 1,200 employees with a revenue of 350,000 Swiss francs. That means we're registered on the Swiss stock exchange. But all of that, we reinvest roughly 10% into R&D development of new products. We are already quite involved into healthcare IT. We have uh, integrated our systems to more than 1 million hospital beds. We have more than 100,000 uh, nurse call system. We handle per year more than 800 million critical alerts. We have 12,000 software installation, almost 7,000 mobility installation, and more than 100 acute care installations. So we do exist uh, on a quite large scale already out on the healthcare market. We also have a global presence with office and activities in America, Europe, Middle East, Asia, and Australia. Like I said before, we are active in different business areas. We are active in security, retail, industry, but our main, 
focus is healthcare, meaning hospital, elderly care, and independent living. And now I'd like to pass down to Muila, who will talk about MICO2 and how MICO2 can help you do your work better. Muila? Thank you. Okay, so let's start with what we uh, already know. Most of us are using smartphones and so too are the uh, caregivers in our hospitals. Recent surveys suggest that upwards of 70% uh, and up to 96% of uh, doctors are already using their personal smartphones for work-related tasks. Now, the real question is, are these devices good enough? Are these devices good enough for healthcare? Which also leads into, should these devices in fact be purpose-built? Now, as ASCOM, we put together purpose-built devices, devices that are designed for the environment that they'll be used in. So this is where we start in terms of gathering our requirements to build such a device. So looking at uh, the hospital environment, we notice certain things. The hospital is open 24-7. The staff, they work in shifts, and it's typical that they share their devices. So differences between regions are whether they work a 12-hour shift or whether they work an 8-hour shift. But either way, the hospital is open 24-7. Therefore, there's an expectation for communication to the device to also be available and dependable throughout that 24-hour uh, cycle. Our caregivers are running towards emergencies. It happens. They drop their devices. So durability becomes a very important factor. Small things like uh, the need for regular disinfection. This also has implications on the device. Infection control policies and the fact that our caregivers are having to listen out for uh, medical alarms. And this raises a really big concern, which is alarm fatigue. If they receive a lot of these alarms, at times they become desensitized to these alarms. So we also need a way to manage those alarms and make sure that the caregiver, the right caregiver gets the right alert at the right time. So all of these sort of things for us become requirements that we must uh, somehow fit into the uh, mobile solution. Other sort of requirements which uh, I implied are a clear and intuitive interface so that you have minimal interactions to achieve your tasks, things like seamless communication. This is making sure that no call is dropped while the caregivers are running between the corridors of the uh, hospital. In essence, the device has to be uh, dependable. Small things like exchangeable battery. This means you can start every shift with a fully charged battery, meaning you're mobile and communicating at all times. Now let's look at the devices that they're using today. If they're using consumer devices, simply put, these devices are just not fit for this purpose. There's a lot of running around. so. Uh, communication uh, over the Wi-Fi network, making sure every single core doesn't drop. They're not designed for this. The hospital environment is, in fact, a very unforgiving, harsh environment, and durability is demanded. Consumer devices also are not built for this sort of uh, environment. So let's look at how we gather even more requirements in order to understand what is required of a purpose-built device. Our research over the years has involved what we term shadowing. This is when we pair up our researchers together with actual caregivers and walk alongside them, monitoring everything that they do and trying to understand it from within their shoes. So the first challenge that we had with this research approach was establishing a uh, common vocabulary. Coming from a technology world, we were very keen to ask questions like, what do you need from a smart device? What kind of communication needs? Do you have a need for integration? And this just wasn't the language that our caregivers were used to. So we had to adapt. 
And then came this concept of my companion. So we said to the caregivers, imagine I am your companion. Whenever you need information, simply ask me. If you hear an alarm bell, you ask me and I will, I will be able to tell you where it is coming from, what it's about, what level of uh, severity and so on. With this common vocabulary, it was so much easier for them to understand what we needed and it was so much easier for us to understand as the day went along, the points at which they need information, the kind of information that they need to keep. So imagine being able to say to your companion, please remind me to prescribe or to give this medication to patient X. That was the sort of thing that uh, we did. And throughout the working day, we gathered a lot of different uh, needs and requirements of our caregivers. On the screen now is a floor plan. And this floor plan depicts what happens in a single shift while we were shadowing uh, a nurse. At the center are green dots representing the amount of time spent at the workstation accessing information. In the different rooms you have red dots. This is time spent with the patients. With a simple goal to reduce the amount of time and the amount of footsteps between the patient and the point of information, we aim to reduce the size of all the green dots and increase the amount of time spent with patients. How do we do this? It's by putting information in the palm of the nurse's hand, giving her access to information from a mobile device. And in the end, the ultimate goal is to improve the workflow. And by freeing up that time, there's many ways that that time can actually be utilized. It could either be more time with the patients or it could be spent seeing even more patients. One other way to use the time saved is to better manage the staffing hours. So by putting information in the palm of the nurse's hand, what we can do is we can increase productivity and we believe we can also increase efficiency. So having done this uh, research, what we realized is we started off with the premise of finding requirements for a purpose-built smartphone, but what we realized is what they need is so much more than just a smartphone. What they need is a platform, a platform that bridges all of the information gaps, allowing them to spend more time with the patients, a platform that houses a powerful integration engine that brings all the different information from the varied data sources within the hospital to the palm of their hand. A platform that connects our caregivers to each other, allowing them to exchange information and contact each other in times when they need help. Essentially what we need is to mobilize information and bring that to the palm of their hand. Just for visibility, this is what we, uh, this is how we depict what this platform should look like. On the left-hand side are points of integration, interfaces to the different systems within the hospital, things like the EMR, things like patient monitoring, medical alarms, uh, nurse core systems. These are all of the inputs that need to go into this platform. At the center is the integration engine that manages all of this information. Above that are applications, applications used to manage and configure the platform, reporting, uh, dashboards, assignments. Uh, all of this is managed using the applications above. At the center, in red, is mobility. These are the devices that are in the palm of the nurse's hands. With those devices, we expect to deliver functionality such as secure text, uh, Bear in mind we're dealing with patient data, so it's important for that to be secure. We want telephony. We want to have a very intelligent way of managing all of those medical alarms and so on. On the right-hand side is applications. Applications that increase the functionality beyond today's requirements and starts to uh, bring in functionality that starts to service tomorrow's requirements. 
So the platform, in essence, is very flexible and indeed scalable. It is also vendor agnostic, so we can take integrations from pretty much any system. And then come to the device. Another thing we noticed is our caregivers, in some cases, were carrying multiple devices. So we looked at the different functionality and brought it all into one device. Robust smart device, paging functionality, walkie-talkie, uh, barcode scanning, telephony, all of those things come together into one device that has integrations at the bottom there to all of the different systems within the hospital. This is how our device started to take form. Now, today what we have is a device that is everything inside and outside, purpose-built, purpose-built for the environment in which it will be used in, purpose-built to suit the requirements of the intended user. And this is our caregivers. At the back of our mind is always, how do, I, how do we address that big challenge of alarm fatigue? So all of that is built into the device and built into the platform so that we can better serve our caregivers. This is how we came up, or this has been our journey to create my companion, Myco, Asco Myco. The Asco Myco was actually launched about two years ago, and now we have our second iteration of the device. So now I'm going to quickly go through what's new in the new device. So first up, we've added support for Google Mobile Services. Google Mobile Services is a collection of Google's most popular applications and APIs that deliver Google functionality onto a smart device. Applications like Gmail, the Google Calendar, the Chrome browser, and so on. Functionality such as push notifications, allowing application developers to develop very smart applications for mobile devices. Google Mobile Services also opens us up to access to the Google Play Store, which is the largest app uh, application and digital media distribution platform for all Android devices. We've also added new features such as uh, NFC. NFC is uh, an identification technology which a lot of hospitals are starting to use now. In sometimes in combination with barcode scanning. Uh, different things you can use NFC for, things like access control and so on. We've also introduced in the ASCO Myco infrared location, simply uh, stated IR location. This is a very simple technology to install and delivers room level accuracy. We can combine this with our personal alarm functionality to give location whenever staff are in distress. We've also added support for a headset via our USB port at the bottom of the handset. We've also improved the uh, screen utilization by removing the software navigation keys on the screen and going to hardware buttons. In essence, we've improved on our original concept, ASCO Myco. And now I hand over back to uh, Daniel to tell us more about the solution areas that we address. Okay, thank you, Mwila. So Mwila has introduced the ASCO Myco um, version 2 and uh, what different features and functions and also what the intention was when we built it. <clears throat> I will continue to talk about what specific areas we, we believe that the ASCO Myco can assist uh, healthcare caregivers with. We collect them under, an, uh, under a headline that we call Integrated Workflow Intelligence. And we are aiming to help you with, uh, let's call it intelligent alert handling, with, uh, of course, staff communication and collaboration, point of care support, continuity of care empowering the patient, and finally, workflow analysis. And today, I will focus on the first three of them. And try to illustrate what we can do by pinpointing four specific problem areas. Problem area of alarm fatigue, the problem of interruption of staff, uh, the issue of studying information versus the mobile staff that uh, we addressed in the beginning, 
And finally, an example of how we can use the IR locationing to uh, remove hospital-acquired infections. But let's start with the issue of alarm fatigue. We know that research has shown that between 80 and 99 percent of patient monitoring alarm, they are not clinically significant and thereby do not require clinical intervention. So in a sense, they are unnecessary. And uh, this, of course, causes stress among the staff, uh, which also turns to turnover and burnout among the staff. And they can also lead to missed alarms, meaning patient uh, hazard. And the alarm fatigue all adds up to the noise pollution. And we know it's very tightly linked to that. Uh, from the 60s to uh, 2003, there's a study indicating that the average noise has gone up from 57 decibel to 72 decibel uh, during daytime. And this is quite a substantial increase. 72 decibel it equals having someone doing vacuum cleaning basically 10 feet or 3 meters away from you. And this is, of course, a hardly good environment for a patient to be, be in. And this is also one of the leading causes of sleep deprivation, delirium, which in its turn leads to longer recovery time. And ASCOM, how ASCOM would like to solve this is to go from, from a situation where you just have anonymous beeping uh, all over the corridor to knowing exactly what type of equipment that the alarm is coming from. Is it from uh, ventilators, nurse call, infusion pumps, patient monitoring, dialysis machines, etc. And then run these alerts through a filter, removing the unnecessary ones and also removing the ones that could be potential hazardous if they are persistent, such as leads off that are resolved by themselves after a short period of time. So minimizing the number of alarms that reaches the caregivers. We also want to provide good decision support for them by adding priority and prioritize them according to a global color and sound standard. And finally, we would like to distribute the alarms only to the assigned caregiver uh, according to their responsibility and role. And finally, present them on My Companion, the ASCO Micro 2. Uh, and here you can see that we clearly indicate priority using LED and color. We clearly indicate what is the type of alarm on the top display, the so patient monitoring alarm from bed ICU 2. Uh, and we give all the details for the, for the staff to take the decision based on this kind of information. And we also are adding the possibility to add apps to the ASCOM Micro, such as this ASCOM Digistat app that can show a live feed from information uh, of uh, IV pumps, ventilators and patient monitoring. So here you can see the 12 beds on the department, if there are any ongoing alarm, you can open one bed and see all the live data from each one of the equipments connected to the patient. And you can even go into, in this case, the fusion pump and see what has happened the past couple of hours. And this information can also be presented on a wall-mounted TV or a desktop monitor. So when we talk about mobile information, it's not only that the information resides on a mobile phone, it can also be that it's displayed on a wall monitor accessible for the mobile staff. Another communication related issue is that of interruptions. And we, we know that interruptions, they are normal and almost core part of nursing. But the problem is when, when they disrupt scheduled tasks, uh, like uh, medication, or when they are competing with each other. And uh, I think we all have experience on how it can be when something is disturbing us while we perform a complex task. And what happens is we tend to lose what we have in our working memory. And our user, user experience team back at R&D, they talk about situations with high cognitive load for the staff on the in the hospital. And 
there are of course many studies done on interruptions for hospital staff and this one found an average of 6.7 disruptions per hour we have also studies indicating up to 23 uh, disruptions per hour uh, and um, we also know that these interruptions they they lead to a risk of forgetting important things and there is also clear evidence that interruptions are linked to errors done during medication And one reason of these interruptions, especially on a normal ward or health care department, is that of a nurse call from patients that are needing help. And of course, there's a, there's a logical consequence of patients needing help. Of course, they need to notify the mobile staff. But the strategy that we see in many customers is the everything to everyone approach, where you use fixed notification technology, such as buzzers, and this tends to lead to quite excessive noise and um, this increases the patient satisfaction this satisfaction and just with the patient monitoring alerts our target is to transfer from a situation looking like this just unfiltered non-prioritized anonymous broadcast of alerts to identify what is the issue is it the assistance call is it code call is it telemetry call Again, with specific priority, high, medium, and low. And we also know that nurse and bed numbers uh, are very valuable information. Names and bed numbers of the patients are very valuable information for the nurses. Uh, and the nurses, they know their patients pretty well. It means that the nurse call from a patient they know is fall risk. That can be much more important than from someone they know just want to ask what time they can be discharged, for example. So therefore, to know the specific bed and even the name of the patient, the call, the call is coming from, that's great information for the staff to have. And this would finally bring us to a situation where, where you can basically mute all the broadcast alerts in the corridor and move from the constant noise and fixed alert presentation to only your alerts, only in your pockets. And you would have the ability to move from constant interruption to qualified interruption, where qualified means that you're informed of what patient the issue is, uh, uh, what is the current condition of the patient, and am I a primary caregiver. And you also have the ability to forward the alert to your backup body. And of course, we would like you to view this information on my companion, Yasko Michael. And finally, you can move from constant interruptions to what we like to call actionable interruptions, where the nurse can answer the, the call directly, talk to the patient, perhaps go by the, the kitchen to fetch some water, or by the medication room to fix some pain medication, or even forward this task to another colleague that is more suited to handle this, such, a, such as an aide or a tech nurse. That was the, the issue of interruptions and how that can be solved using the ASCOM healthcare platform and the ASCOM Myco. The next area is that of the mobile staff, but the problem of having fixed information and documentation. And uh, we, we heard a nurse describing herself as, as the nomad of the hospital. Basi basically, she's carrying what she can in her mobile office in her pocket. But uh, a lot of documentation and alert display is it's still fixed. And this tends to lead to quite extensive walking, meaning lost time. And you remember that picture that Mila showed in the beginning of a nurse during a 10-hour um, shift. There was a lot of walking, meaning a lot of waste time, so to say. And just to get an idea of, of how this mobile office of a nurse looks like, we asked one to empty her pocket. And as you can see, this is page one, and this is page two. And one thing that struck us is that there are a lot of checklists, a lot of translation tables that basically could reside on a smart device, but also that she had to transfer a lot of information from a device at the bedside, such a temperature or pulse meter, to a notebook. 
and then back to digital form while moving around uh, on the unit. And that is the, the illustration that Mila showed earlier, where we want to combine several different uh, devices, but also notebooks and even um, papers into the ASCO Micro. And the solution for this is for us to, to cooperate with other app vendors. Uh, we do have, ASCOM has, do have quite a lot of own apps, but we also need to cooperate with other uh, app vendors out on the market who want to integrate different information system or provide information system of their own. And if you integrate, you can also move from fixed information to mobile information, such as this one, an app that allows the staff to enter vital sign directly at the bedside. That was the issue of the mobile staff, but fixed information and how we can solve it. The last issue that we'd like to discuss is the problem of hospital acquired infections. And we also know that hand hygiene remains one of the most important intervention in preventing hospital acquired infection, but at the same time yeah, numbers can vary, but this study found roughly 8.7% of all hospitalized patients, they do get a hospital-acquired infection, such as MRSA. The reason is that perhaps the staff forget to wash their hands, some feel that it's not necessary to wash their hands, and there's really no control to follow up on what is the compliance of hand hygiene. And this issue we can help to solve using the ASCO Micro and the IR location in Beacons that Mila spoke about earlier. Uh, it uh, provides a warning if the staff forgets to wash their hands and uh, it can also give the hospital very tangible data on the compliance to hand washing uh, with the patients. Now I would like to leave the world to Fergal Faro to discuss a customer success story of the uh, implementation of uh, our systems. Fergal? Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, my name is Fergal O'Farrell, and I am the uh, Director of Solution Sales at ASCOM here for the Growth Markets region. Uh, the example that I would like to talk to is the Humber River Hospital in Ontario, Canada. Uh, the Humber River Hospital services about 850,000 people in northwest Toronto. It's a 656-bed facility and it's built so that it can expand to 750 beds by 2025. The building uh, was uh, worth about 1.75 billion Canadian dollars and as we've said, it's unique not just because of its price tag, but it's unique, unique because of the fact that it's the first fully digital hospital in the Northern Americas. Lumber River has deployed ASCOM Micro Handset to many different types of care providers within the hospital. And they've deployed them so that those care providers can communicate with each other and people internally and externally within the facility by making phone calls. But they also have them configured so that they can receive alerts, code alerts, specialty alerts, and subscription messages from many different sources, including nurse call, integrated bedside terminals, and their real-time location services tracking system. As a fully digital hospital, Humber River needed to make sure that any investment that they made in technology was future-proof. And the additional embedded features of the MICO, such as the barcode scanner, the camera, browser capability, the ability to support Android applications, and also video interaction in the future, 
enable them to plan for providing more closed loop processes in the future and also importantly to leverage the significant investments that they have made in their hospital IT systems, especially their electronic medical record application. The MICO is an integral part of the hospital's integrated workflows and it allows care providers simple and immediate access to systems and information. Here in Australia, we have recently deployed two major new build hospitals with MICO. And in those hospitals, we integrate with systems such as the nurse call, building management systems so that we can receive alerts around different building and environmental notifications. We have integrated with pneumatic tube systems to announce the arrival of uh, deliveries. We integrate with the fire and security systems so that fire alerts and different security breaches from access control can be sent as messages to care providers and operations staff. And we also integrate with the RTLS, the real-time location system, so that we can provide accurate locationing for the mobile duress functionality of the micro handset. So all in all, we are very excited about our MICO2 launch and the Humber River Hospital is a very, very good and very well documented example of a fully digital hospital using the ASCOM MICO handset. On the internet, on YouTube, there is some very good videos on the Humber River Hospital with some interviews with the CEO explaining why they chose the micro handset and so that they could facilitate the ability to make sure that their clinical staff were able to focus on providing care by having maximum communication capability and that is the reason why that they chose the ASCOM micro as part of their IT and T fit out. So at that point in time I'm completed with the uh, case study and I believe that I hand back to Adam. Thank you very much Virgil um, and thank you Daniel Marilla. Um, that concludes the presentation um, but we do have a few questions that I'll, I'll raise um, that I've been uh, receiving. Um, so again thank you everyone for attending. I'll um, now uh, pass on some questions. So the, in no particular order, um, the first question we have here is uh, Daniel you mentioned uh, applications and application partners. Is there a program for um, people to sign up to if they have an application, if they want to be an application partner for Marco2 and what is the process? Yes, we have a, we have a team working here um, to, uh, yeah, we have an application partner team uh, that uh, assist um, other vendors or other companies who are making apps and other application to integrate them into ASCO Myco and also provide, uh, provide them with specific APIs to, to our handset that they can um, uh, yeah, use the different great. functionality. And I'm, I'm happy to send that information out to yeah, the person yeah. to ask that question. Yeah, that's so, correct. Thank you, Daniel. Um, the next question was, uh, is, is the Myco 2 available now? Okay, <clears throat> this is Mwila. We expect to ship the uh, first uh, ASCO Myco 2 handsets in the first week of June. So, uh, yeah, available uh, starting 2nd of June. That's great. And uh, this leads into nicely, there was another question regarding uh, build trials. Do we offer trials for the ASCO Myco 2? Uh, yes, we do. In fact, this is our preferred way of uh, engaging with customers to start with uh, uh, smaller uh, field trials before going mass deployment on the whole site. Great, thank you. Um, uh, uh, another question was regarding uh, the Humber River, which I believe Fergal answered in terms of uh, do we have server uh, supporting information? And yes, we do have uh, videos and um, articles I'm happy to share um, offline again. Um, it, and another question is if if you don't have an ASCOM nurse call system, can you integrate with other um, nurse call providers? 
Uh, yes, the uh, ASCOM healthcare platform is completely vendor agnostic. So we can integrate with uh, pretty much any other systems out there and deliver whatever functionality into the platform and therefore uh, into our mobile devices and ask them like Great, fantastic. Um, another question was the, the use of the ASCO marker too. Uh, the question was uh, who are the main users you are seeing that are using the device? Uh, primarily, for example, at uh, Humber River, it's actually the uh, nurses. And this is because we've built a lot of functionality in the handset, particularly to support alarm management. And the typical recipients of those alarms that act upon those alarms are the nurses. But this is also not to say that it's exclusively for nurses. Uh, we do have installations where uh, the ASCO Myco is being used by physicians also. And it's a very practical device for anybody looking for durability and the clinical attributes that we've built into the handset. Great, thank you. Um, and again, uh, another question regarding a device. Uh, uh, is the device uh, the be all and end all or can you mix it between other devices? Uh, it is very possible to mix. Uh, we have uh, deployments where, for instance, the nurses are using ASCO micos and uh, the porters are using a uh, uh, simpler voice over Wi-Fi device. Great. Thank you. Um, and, the, and the last couple of questions is uh, I'm happy to answer, and it's regarding the recording of the presentation and the PDF version of the presentation, which I'm happy to share and send it out. Um, after this webinar is completed. Um, let me just check to see if I have any further questions here. Uh, no. Okay. All right. So that, um, that is all. Thank you very much uh, again, everyone, for attending. Thank you to Daniel and Marilla and Fergal for, for presenting today. I hope um, it was of value to everybody. And feel free to send me any questions if uh, you do think of it after. Um, as my email is linked to this uh, webinar. So thank you again, guys. Have a great afternoon. Um, and yes, send questions my way if you have any further ones. So for now, I'll close the webinar. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.